Coming up on News Valdosta, a house fire leaves three people dead. And a teacher is gaining national recognition for her excellent work. Stephanie Salone will give us a look at the weather. And Olivia Steen has our local sports. News Valdosta starts right now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Bridget Muckle. And I'm Shelby Mitchell. Three people have been in a house fire in Nashville. 39-year-old Arturo Garcia, his stepson Toby Hawkins, and Toby's 17-year-old friend Christopher Rowan were the fatalities. Two survivors are currently being treated for injuries and smoke inhalation at South Georgia Medical Center. Police concluded that the fire was accidental due to unattended food cooking on the stove. This is the 15th fire-related fatality in Georgia this year. Moultrie police have charged a father and mother following a bloody domestic violence dispute. Authorities received a call from a child in Moultrie about his parents covered in blood from a fight. After arriving on the scene, police found Amanda Williamson and Andrew Anthony covered in blood inside the house. Police say Williamson started the altercation due to intoxication. Anthony and Williamson were both charged with battery and cruelty to children. The two children that were inside during the brawl were turned over to child services. A Park East apartment complex resident is coming to grips today with a robbery of his home. Here's reporter Ryan Saylor with more details. A reporting for the Park East Apartments where Monday evening around 10.30 p.m. there was a forced entry into one of its residences. The victim, 29-year-old Zachary Didio, had a total of nine items stolen from his residence. These items included six guns, two laptops, and one 42-inch TV. Some of the guns that were stolen from his residence, including a 9mm semi-automatic and a one and a one silver gauge shotgun. The armed assailant is considered armed and dangerous due to the items he has stolen from the residence. Also, it is advised that if you know any other information that you contact the local authorities. Reporting for News Valdosta, this is Ryan Saylor. A teacher at Valdosta's W.G. Nunn Elementary School has been singled for her exceptional work in the classroom. Teresa Bannister is gaining some national recognition as Renaissance Learning awarded her the Accelerated Reader Model Classroom Certification. This award acknowledges her efforts to promote personalized reading practice, assess comprehension, and monitor progress. The certification demonstrates that a majority of her students have met or exceeded goals for reading, practice, and comprehension. This is Ms. Bannister's 12th year reaching Accelerated Reader Model Classroom Certification. And Bannister isn't the area's only outstanding teacher. Wiregrass Community College English instructor Michael Williams has earned the 2014 Rick Perkins Instructor of the Year Award. The award is designed to recognize and honor technical college instructors who make significant contributions to technical education through innovation and leadership in their fields. Williams will now serve as an ambassador for technical education in Georgia. He'll make public appearances throughout the year, including addresses to the Georgia General Assembly, the Governor, and the Georgia Technical College System Leadership Conference. Coming up, two cities rank high on the nation's poverty list. And a new app is helping high schoolers pick a college. Stay with us. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Valdosta State University. Encouraging. In-depth inquiry. Hands-on experience. Service and involvement. And a global view. While offering. A beautiful residential campus. Over 100 fields of study. 
graduate and online degrees, and championship athletics. All in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Do more, become more. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Valdosta and Albany, which are two cities, are two of the largest cities in Georgia, and they also top the list of Georgia cities with the highest poverty rates. A story by a reporter at Microsoft's MSN website says that, based on media income, Valdosta and Albany are tied as the third poorest cities in the nation. Those rankings are based on statistics for the U.S. Census Bureau. Albany officials say that the biggest issue is jobs. With many low-income families, the majority of the community holds a criminal record. This, in turn, keeps many of the citizens from working. The leader of an Albany organization for homeless people says the only solution to the problem is to build community support for bringing the city back to the good life. A city council meeting will be held tonight at Valdosta City Hall at 5.30 p.m. Topics for tonight include recycling containers and dumpsters for the Public Works Department and service pumps for the water treatment plant. Citizens are encouraged to attend in order to voice opinions and concerns of the city. City council meetings are held every first and third Thursday after the first Sunday of the month. 400 leading businesses in Valdosta, along with local government officials and top business leaders, will gather for the 100 second annual membership meeting next Thursday at the Rainwater Conference Center. The Chamber of Commerce will provide attendees with a progress report from 2013 and highlight current goals. The Southwest Georgia Bank Business Plan competition winner will be announced, and the A.L. Girardin Award will be presented to an outstanding chamber member. The event will also serve as an induction ceremony for the 2014 Board of Director Chairman. You can start purchasing your tickets at the Valdosta Lowndes County Chamber. According to the U.S. News and World Report Best High Schools list, Lee County High School is ranked 26th in the state. The study looked at the profile of the school along with math and English achievement and advanced placement participation and success rates. Tomorrow is the last day for parents and stakeholders to give their opinions on the 2014-2015 academic calendar. A brief survey is available on the city school's website for parents to choose how early release days, Thanksgiving and Christmas break will be handled. If you don't have access to a computer, all of the schools have an open door policy allowing you to go on site and complete the survey there. College deadlines are slowly approaching and it can be pretty stressful for a student to keep everything on track. But don't worry, there's an app for that. Naviant Student is an app that allows students to research over 4,000 colleges and organize them based on their interest. Students can email or call a college directly from the app and map the location of colleges and plan visits. Up next on News Valdosta, the weather has been really chilly lately. Will it stay that way? Find out what's it, what it's going to be like this weekend. Don't go away. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. 
Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to News Valdosta. The coldest temperatures in Georgia are expected to start this Friday with much of the state in single digits. How cold will Valdosta be? Here's Stephanie with this weekend's temperatures now. Stephanie? Thanks, ladies. Yes, these past couple of mornings, the temperatures have been dropping with freezing temperatures and brisk winds. I'm sure everyone has seen frost on their grass and rooftops while on the way to work. Most nights this week, we've had freeze warnings ensuring people to stay in at night if possible, but no snow just yet. The afternoons are what most people are looking forward to because that's when temperatures start to warm up with sunny skies. Well, you can put away those heavy coats because the high today is about 56 degrees, much warmer than yesterday. So a light jacket will do you just fine. However, there is a bit of wind, so a trendy scarf will look nice with that jacket. It is yet again partly cloudy, making us think it's going to rain. Let's sure hope not because cold wind and rain is a recipe for pneumonia. The overnight low tonight is 26 degrees, so you'll need a heavy coat. Keep that scarf, and why not throw on those cute boots you ladies love so much and those nice boots for the fellas. There is no chance of rain this evening, but expect much more chilly winds tonight. Tomorrow, sunrise will be around 7.30 a.m. We'll have some sun in the morning, but increasing clouds during the afternoon. Temperatures drop back down to 46 degrees, but with clear skies and a low of 25 degrees at night. Today's UV index will be moderate at a 4, and the pollen index will be at a low. However, keep your important allergy medicine handy. You never know what tricks Vodos' weather has up its sleeve. The predominant pollen is juniper. That's all for your weather. Back to you ladies at the news desk. Coming up, Olivia Steen will give us a look at local sports. Stay with us. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Valdosta State University. Quality academics. Caring faculty mentors. A beautiful campus. Opportunities for involvement, leadership, and service. Championship athletics, spirit, and pride. Discover your opportunities. Valdosta State University. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Two, one. Welcome back. Let's check in with Olivia Steen for a look at sports. Olivia? The Valdosta High Wildcats face the Colquitt County Packers taking a tough region loss that came down to the final 32 seconds of the game. The Packers led for majority of the game into the last two minutes of the fourth quarter when Valdosta Wildcat Trey Barrett put the Wildcats up 53-51 to on a layup. With just a minute left, the Packers regained the lead after Jaquan Blakely converted an and one after being fouled. Blakely continued to lead the Packers for the last 32 seconds, closing out the game. The final score was 59 to 54. The Wildcats' current record is 12 and 7 and 3 and 5 in the region. The team is currently on a four-game losing streak, and their momentum has been slowed down. The Valwood Valiants face Windsor Academy tonight at six. A key thing the Valiants must focus on is their free throw shooting. Based on previous matches, Valwa was 11 and 27 at the free throw line, which ultimately led to their defeat. There is not much season left this year, so the Valiants need to pull themselves together or have an early off season. The Lowndes County Vikings will be heading on the road tomorrow to face Coffee County. They are currently 9 and 10 and 1 and 5 in the region. The team has recovered from its loss to Brunswick and plans on going into Coffee County High School with their heads high. 
Although the Vikings are off to a rough start, they continue to work hard and learn from their previous mistakes. That's all for your local sports. Back to you ladies at the news desk. Thanks, Olivia. When we come back, local dancers are preparing for a Cinderella moment. And the Reading Bowl holds its first competition. Stay with us. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Welcome back to our Thursday edition of News Valdosta. This Saturday, Valdosta High School will host its first Helen Ruffin Reading Bowl. The competition is made to test students on their knowledge of selected books statewide. There will be three levels of competition, elementary, middle, and high school. The winners and runner-up will advance to the regional competition at Valdosta State University the following Saturday. The Valdosta School of Ballet, working together with Valdosta State University Theater and Dance, are bringing back the Cinderella Ballet. The ballet is scheduled for this Saturday, January 25th, on Mathis Auditorium stage. Sanderson Farms Super Chicken Road Show is bringing public awareness and opportunity to Valdosta. News Valdosta reporter Courtney Perry has the story. Sanderson Farms 2014 Super Chicken Road Show is taking place today and ends tomorrow at midnight. Sanderson Farm offers many opportunities like this for college students such as summer internships and trainee programs. This is an event that provides an inside look at what working for a poultry production company would be like in a time span of only two days. It calls for students in a multitude of majors including law, science, accounting, and computer programming. In the past, this roadshow has included a social function, dinner, and an informational session to learn about the history, company culture, and available opportunities at Sanderson Farms. The food industry can be a very interesting and rewarding career, and the Super Chicken Road Show is a great way to get your foot in the door. For News About Asta, I'm Courtney Perry. A new HOPE scholarship grant program is being proposed, which would provide full tuition to college students with a 3.5 grade point average. Nathan Deal, who is proposing this grant, is optimistic about the funding with HOPE and is hoping to get at least $3.6 million in state funds. HOPE scholarships are funded through a state lottery, but experts say those lottery funds won't be able to pay tuition for all the students who have qualified for the scholarship in the past. The new proposed program would redirect with the funding to students with higher grades. Well, that's our show today. I'm Bridget Muckle. And I'm Shelby Mitchell. Thanks for watching. See you next time.